Hey everybody, welcome back to the Carriage Way Podcast for the uh, month of June. E3 month, happy E3 everyone. Although it seems like it was forever ago that that happened. Yeah, strangely. So uh, we won't be talking too much about E3 on this podcast. I mean, and if you follow our Let's Play videos, you, you, we've talked about it. I mean, for God's sakes, we're playing Final Fantasy VII. And, and J- Jacob already did like a, I think oh. a pretty sweet video that wrapped up E3. Go check it well. out. Yeah, Jake, you did. It's called Jacob's Top 5 Silly Takeaways of E3 2019. Yeah, just uh, the be, be prepared. The audio quality, a little lackluster. The video quality, a little lackluster. But, you know, it's got that good old down-home charm. Yeah. Um, generally, we start with channel updates. There's not a whole lot uh, going on. I, you we're know, the shows, you know, uh, thank God it's fantasy. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, 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 we got Harvest Moon Day. Tamriel Tuesday is one away. Yeah. I mean, we've got irons in the fire. Things are going on. But uh, and, I, and and like you said, like the top five Jacob Silly videos, I, I, I'm already planning another one that hopefully would have a little bit better video sound quality. Uh, but, you know, also, who knows? These things sometimes fall through. And also, as a point, too, I think it is important noting that Tamriel Tuesday's long staple of Carriage Way is gone. Not yeah. necessarily forever, but it came is, after E3, very relevant to the E3 conversation. Is there a reason that Tamriel Tuesdays is gone? Yes. I woke up after watching Bethesda's E3 press conference and said, I don't want to support these guys anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like the Bethesda for years has been going like they it's sad it's like seeing someone close to you turn to the dark side yeah and uh and just seeing Todd Howard you know out there and he's just like still once again testing out his stand up routine and it's like I I can't play a game that like is this you know associated with that guy and his very 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 punchable face (laughs) (laughs) we love you Todd please be on our podcast sometime (laughs) so we can punch you in the face yeah we get so many views (laughs) so let's move on from channel updates to what we've been watching and playing you know Joe what we're skipping something and we didn't talk about this in the prep what we've been making, baby. Oh, okay. You, we want to talk about yeah, it? Yeah, we got to talk about what we've been making. That's more important about what we've been playing, right? We're sure. artists. Of course. Uh, Have you been making anything? <laughs> sadly, no. <laughs> like, I've just been so busy, and I, I've i been s- slacking big time. I just I just haven't been doing anything at all aside from some art for the channel. I just haven't done anything. Everybody should post in the comments. Shame. Yeah, it's we're uh, gonna walk Joe down the avenues of Missoula, and uh, like Cersei Lannister was in Game of Thrones season. Spoilers. Hey, no spoilers here at Carriage Way. <laughs> no spoiler. Except for that very obvious one. (laughs) I'm not saying anything specific. Wink, wink. Um, I mean, personally, though, I've been, like, very active on, uh, you know, I'm very not a slacker at all. You know what I mean? I I don't. Tell me. (laughs) Just still keeping on trucking on the old books. Uh, Just still writing away every day. It comes to that point in the evening, and I realize, yep, got to write, I guess. And it's like, I, I'm like turning into kind of a procrastinator where I like open it up, look at it for a while, close the computer lid, walk around, go get a chai tea. You know, and that's like, okay. But you're, st- you're still writing that. every day. Yeah, I am. So, I mean, you know, not too much of a procrastinator. Um are there any days that you look forward to writing or has it become a slog? Uh, it goes through waves, you know, like there's, there'll just be like two weeks where it's like a slog every single day to write. And then there will be, um, you know, a day will come and it's like, yeah, you know, I got some things to say. You know, I really like, I, I got like a poem idea bouncing around in my head and I'm like, I want to incorporate this in somehow. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been a little bit of a, a slog a couple of weeks, but you know, it's still, I think I'm still happy with how it's going. Yeah. Anything else you've been working on? I've set a new goal for myself. Uh, I ask everyone to go check out the carriage underscore way Twitter account. I'm trying to tweet every day, at least a tweet once a day. You know, they're not great tweets. I'm like still, I'm not good at Twitter. I don't really get it. I don't understand really how to use it or build a following or like engage with people online. I mean, I have enough trouble like engaging with people in person. Um, it's like, I just never know what to say, you know? Mm. And then also I get frustrated. Like I was looking at uh, some tweets about Final Fantasy VII and it's just like, come on, man, get bent. Uh, about the remake in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like a bunch of negativity. And it's just like, can anybody be like happy about anything and, you know, with that game? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I get frustrated on Twitter, but uh, that's a goal that I'm working on. I feel like it's a creative pursuit. And this isn't something I've been making necessarily, but I got my motorcycle license. Oh, congratulations, man. Yep. It was a lot of work, actually. It was a full weekend training course, beginner rider course, that was uh, 8 to 5, Saturday, Sunday. And it was exhausting. It really took a lot out of me. And, like, I've still, I'm still recovering, I feel like. Um my my system is not used to that rigid of a structure getting up that early and then like working vigorously at a new skill in front of a bunch of people who are judging you yeah and especially because they a lot like everyone in the class was like a bunch of you know they were bragging about how uh like well i've you know ridden plenty before so like i'm the i'm the only guy that's like i've never i i don't i've never ridden and uh and, and, and so I felt a little bit embarrassed, um, especially, you know, like when it's like, OK, Jacob, you know, run the, through the, the course and everyone's watching you. No pressure. It's like, wait, what am I supposed to do? Wait, what corner <laughs> am I supposed to go on? Um, so that was a little bit stressful. Hey, uh, it occurs to me now. Now, technically, most of the family has their motorcycle license. Yep. Mom and dad and you and me yeah that's come, four of us <laughs> come on jess come on ryan <laughs> give your balls a tug um uh, letter kenny okay <laughs> uh let's see and, and i mean i don't know i guess not making too much else um but just happy wrote my journal for the first time in six months last night oh i didn't know you'd let that lapse I suppose with writing your your book, oh yeah, it, it it's probably taking up a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, time. one of the things that really got me started into writing and getting to that point where I can write every night was keeping a journal, and like I kept, I wrote in my journal every night, and um, when I started like doing other types of writing, like writing the book or writing my poetry collections. Um, oh, I'm reading it right now. Okay, uh, June 27th. I hate Joe. <laughs> I hate him so much. He's such an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's poetry uh-huh. on the page here, buddy. Uh, it, asshole. <laughs> kill, kill, kill. <laughs> yeah, asshole. It's pretty much the... Yeah, to uh, go back to the Dark Brotherhood, uh, Tamriel Tuesdays when reading that guy's <laughs> journal about like... <laughs> Uh, you know, red, blue, red, blue. <laughs> kill, 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 kill. Bunch kill. of random. Yeah. 69, 69, 69, <laughs> 60. Whoa. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, that was from the, the, the Tamriel Tuesdays diary, not my diary. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but, yeah, I, it, it, keep writing a journal is just, it's, it becomes exhausting, <laughs> especially when it's like, I there came a point when I I thought I'm not writing a journal for me anymore. I feel like I'm writing a journal for the sake of writing a journal, and it just became something I didn't want to keep pursuing. Oh, okay, understood. So, Joe, you wanted to talk about some stupid book you've been reading. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm still reading Norwegian Wood. I had just started it last month, uh, and I'm virtually done. Uh, I've come around on a, a lot. Um, like I, I, um, 
I think the the pros still seem stilted. And not uh, the amateurs. Sorry, what? And not the amateurs. Yes. Um, Always funny. But you know, I could just you could chalk that up to the way it was translated. But you know, I, I legitimately do like the things it's trying to say. Uh, I think it is a legitimately good book. Um, See, which is, but I mean, like too, like yeah, like you're saying, like. You know, I think there's, like, don't put overemphasis on, like, the prose. It's like, oh, well, this is bad prose, and this is good prose. It's like, does it make you feel something? I feel like that's, like... Well, no, I mean, like, Does it make I you think, think? Does it make you... Does it change your outlook on the world? Yeah. You know, that's, I feel like, what's so, so much more important than... Uh-huh. Um, like, oh, well, this sentence starts with this thing, and uh, but but you know, I think that well, I think there's there's something the how the prose can make or break a book sometimes. Um, you know, the you you need a good concept, of course, but I think how but, you but, deliver your narrative is is very important, yeah. But I don't think prose is necessary, I don't know, it's just. I don't, we don't need to get it. Anyway, uh, I'm virtually <laughs> done. Uh, and then uh, since the uh, Game of Thrones TV series is over, I told myself that I would finish up reading the book series. Uh, so after that, I'm going to read um, A Song of Ice and Fire, book two. Hmm. Which I believe is A Clash of Kings. I can't remember. It's in my bag. Uh, so I'm going to st- start reading those. Oh, Interesting. Yeah, it's a uh, Georgie. I, I like the first book, uh, but it's been years. But uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna reread it. Who's who's got time for that? Ain't uh, nobody got time for that. Question. Yes. Who's the best waifu <laughs> in Game of Thrones? <laughs> you don't need to answer. Oh, <laughs> no answer okay. needed. Okay. Rhetorical. Let me think about it. Okay, we'll come back to it. Uh, and you've been playing Days Gone. Still, oh yeah, yeah, I can't yeah! Remember last month if you were playing Days. I Gone just yet. started it. Um, you know, I, I yeah, was that game enjo- sucks. I was enjoying it even it deserves then. Deserves like a seventy on Metacritic. Um, yeah, I really, really like that game. It is. I think it's something special. Uh, very, very cool. Very good. Um, it much. There's much more to it than I had initially assumed, and it's got a nice ebb and flow. Uh, which is, I think, what you need in a in a good open world game, and it and it everything feels grounded and meaningful. You know, you you've got your motorcycle, and it's it's not a throwaway instrument. You've got to you, you got to take care of it, and you're always on the lookout for for supplies, and you know, in and all of the supplies are meaningfully placed in the world. You know, if you need a gas can you know, look for a gas station, you know, if you're looking for replacement parts, auto replacement parts, you know, a traffic tunnel that's all blocked up. It's like, oh man, there's going to be a ton of cars in there, but like, because it's dark and cool, like you're going to get a bunch of zombies, you know, in there as well, you know, and it's zombies. um, Are are zombies in this game? Yeah. Freakers. Yeah. they're, They're called freakers in universe, but you know, the, 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 the giant hordes of, freakers uh are like you know they they come out during the day from their caves their nests and shit and they have to they have to they go to a water source to drink and then they hunt deer or hunt you or you know there's the all the ways that the world interacts together it's it just feels feels meaningful in a way that isn't always the case in open world games in fact is 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 rare um so I'm enjoying that aspect. Uh, I I think the narrative is, is good. I like the, I like the characters. Um, it it's taking it's uh, going some interesting places where I suspect I know where it's going, but I don't I don't know for sure. Um, yeah, and I'm not even quite sure how close to the end I am. Um, Jacob knows, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm getting in there. I'm uh, knee deep and. So Wednesday's uh, gone. gone. Gonna come to the switch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, how about yourself, man? What's uh? Well, I uh, beat Claire A's playthrough on Resident Evil Two Remake. Oh yeah, finally we, we played that for the channel some time ago. <laughs> yeah, and I really loved it. I love it. I should not say loved. 
I really love Resident Evil 2 Remake. I think it's just so impressive what they did. And um, I've been, it, it's really gotten me interested in the Resident Evil series. I don't really desire to play any of the other ones, but I've been going back to the old game trailers archives and watching uh, like Bossman and Huber and uh, some of those old GT crew who now are easy allies uh, stream and play through a lot of those games. And um, I have a greater appreciation for those other Resident Evil games, sure, and the, the original versions and whatnot, but Resident Evil 2 Remake really steps up by the, the series, I think, um, and and really shows, hey, no, this can actually be smart, and this can be... And I don't want to say that the other ones are dumb, but you have... <laughs> the other ones, like, you know, Code Veronica, you have, like... Even Resident Evil 1, like Wesker, people love Wesker, and I don't want to like this Wesker, <laughs> but that's a stupid character, you know oh, what I mean? Yes, like, very stupid. A character who wears sunglasses at night and has some sort of weird beach blonde haircut and is he's just a, like stilted. He's a yeah, and it's just everything is stilted and awkward and, um, and not in a way that I find particularly charming. Uh, so I'm just so impressed by Resident Evil 2 that it remake. doesn't have any of that shit yeah I mean, it, I mean there is things that are a little awkward and a little bit like oh that's cheesy but I'm into it you know like I feel that those characters performances um, like Claire is awesome I'm just so surprised by how awesome Claire is yeah um, yeah swears a lot yeah, that's like something I think is really cool. Like, I think that's a mark of any cool person. Am I oh, right? Yeah, of course. Anyway, um, I do plan on playing Leon B. I started it, but I get scared. Everybody, it's just I, like the idea of going and putting myself in a super tense situation. No, thank you. Uh, but I probably will get through uh, Leon B. and move on to some other games that I'm excited to play, like Yakuza Kiwami and uh, Divinity Original Sin Two. But I haven't started them yet. No. And then also, uh, for the channel, we played uh, three episodes of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Uh, so after that, I went and I just played some more on my own. Headphones, uh, relaxed, uh, no pressure environment, no uh, clock, seeing how long this cutscene's taking. You know, just letting myself enjoy it and having a, I'm having a really good time. Uh, I think the level design is, is pretty good, like save room spacing. That's something that's the underappreciated quality of, uh, you know, Dark Souls or um, Egovania, Metroidvania, whatever uh, games is where you put your save room. Because ideally they should be put just far enough that you are half tempted to backtrack to the old one where you know where it's at. Yeah. uh, But not so far that you know, you die seven times just trying to find it. And I feel like in Bloodstained, every single save room uh, that I've come across has been like a total sigh of, oh, thank God. (laughs) You know, I had 15 HP. I was about to die in one hit, you know. Um, Yeah, Yeah. it's a a good feeling. uh, I'm really digging it. I think it feels good to play. Um, I don't want to always just compare it to Castlevania because... Like, in a way, I think it does separate itself a little bit uh, and, and enough where you kind of see Igarashi going, you know, I want to try something a little different. I don't want to just remake Symphony of the Night. Uh, so I do appreciate that. But then again, it's also like, hey, dude, it worked in Symphony of the Night really, really well. You know, maybe try to copy that a little bit more. Uh, it's complex. Yeah. Um. Oh, the um, Mrs. and I have been watching uh, the sitcom Brooklyn Nine-Nine on Hulu. Um, Terry Crews. Yeah, uh, a.k.a. Terry Crews and Friends. Uh, yeah, that, that show is all right. Um, I, I don't think it's my favorite show ever. but uh, <laughs> You don't think, but it, it's possible. <laughs> no, I, I don't. So you know. <laughs> I know. it's. Not I my, know it's not my favorite show ever. <laughs> yeah, it just, it's a sentence soften, softener. Um, yeah, it's, I, you know, I'd recommend. I think it's funny. I think it's it's got some heart. Uh, Andy Samberg. Um, <laughs> like, I, I wasn't sold immediately. Uh, but, you know, getting in, you know, 
you know, six episodes or whatever. And it's uh, not nine, nine episodes in or whatever. Yeah, not quite. Um, I like it. I like it. I like the uh, the dynamics. Not not all the jokes land. I don't think all the humor is super well thought out. But I mean, it's it's a sitcom. Uh, you know, thinking about this is a little bit of a tangent, but when you say like not all the jokes land, mm-hmm. for some reason, you know, like you, you, your brain just takes you places. Okay. Flashback. All right. Okay. You know, and like this can be a flashback to any situation. There's many situations where this happens where it's like I'm in school. Um, I'm pretty quiet. I'm pretty shy. But, you know, by the end of this school year, like I've kind of I've opened myself up. It's like people realize, hey, you know, this guy's pretty funny, you know, and then you and then I, I went over some fans and they're like, oh, Jacob's just so funny. He's so funny. And then they're like, hey, uh, you know, whatever, John, uh, Jacob, this Jacob guy is really funny. Hey, Jacob, tell him a joke. And then it's like, what? <laughs> like, I don't really do jokes, you know, like sometimes I just say something that's just silly and pe- some people laugh if it's, you know. Oh, they, they confused right. your kind of humor for something else. Yeah. Well, and it's just, ah, oh, man, it's just like one of those worst situations. And it just made me think of the joke not landing. Yeah. Sorry, that's pretty uh, self-indulgent of me to uh, bring up. You were saying something earlier about uh, watching more One Punch Man. One the Puncho Man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, I watched season one a while back. Season two uh, started marathon, like, and caught up. So I, like, watched, like, eight episodes in a row, and now I'm caught up. Uh, and I still like that show a lot. You know, it's... I it, I don't think it was my ever my favorite anime. <laughs> I know, it was never my favorite anime, but... Um, I think it's an anime worth watching. It's very comedic. Um, it's kind of it makes fun of a lot of battle anime, battle anime, battle manga, while still like honoring it and yeah. playing, paying tribute to it, which is a hard thing to kind of balance. Yeah, some some of my favorite shit ha- strikes that balance of mocking and loving loving tribute. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like a cabin in the woods or um, Deadpool kind of. Yeah, where it's like both. It's everything that you love about those other deals or other that genre, but also like showing, yeah, this is a silly genre, isn't it? Yeah. This idea, you know. Um, so yeah, I think it is worth watching if uh, you're an anime fan to watch One Punch Man if you haven't season one and season two. And then on the topic of anime, I've just started Evangelion, which got posted to Netflix. Never seen it before. Oh, really? Never. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, what do you think so far? So I'm like two or three episodes in. It's a lot drier than I expected. Uh, I don't know. I guess I don't know what I expected, but it's pretty dry. Do you know it's? It was so influential. It was you know kind of the first show of its kind. Uh, so, like, you know, it's... I think it's less special now because so many shows have taken from it, uh, like Escaflone or even ca- something like Cowboy Bebop, you know, the super high-production anime show that, you know, with the, you know, the tasteful cinematography and the, mm-hmm. you know... Yeah, I mean, I I respect it for sure, um, and I do understand that it was very influential. But um, and there's things I like about you know, like uh, instantly, uh, I like that uh, the protagonist's dad is like just this kind of total d bag who's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm like let my son just do this because I Gendo mean, it's kind of yeah. So I I thought, hey, that's pretty cool, you know. Um, uh, what's funny though is, you know, it was a, a, an anime I was always interested in. Uh, partly because we used to watch AMVs, those anime music videos, and there, a lot of those are still up on YouTube. And like a lot of them would pull from Evangelion, and I'd be like, "Oh, that looks like a good show," but um, for whatever reason, I don't. How I remember it is, uh, Joe and Jess, my Joe, who you know, <coughs> sorry, my throat, and our sister Jess. And maybe Jess can leave a comment and be like, no, this wasn't the case, but would say, no, Evangelion's too inappropriate. 
Okay, I would have never said that. You watch tons of inappropriate stuff. Under yeah, my watch. I know. That's how I feel. Like, you know, I watch like GTO and yeah, like GTO is just as inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. So like, I don't. But I don't know why. But it was like, hey, can, you know, I want to watch Evangelion. No, it's too inappropriate. Maybe did we just never own Evangelion? No, and- it's well. I mean, uh, I don't. We'd always like rent it from the video store. Um, I have all the DVDs at home. Uh, of the TV series. Uh, but I was so excited when they came on Netflix because the m- theatrical movie, the wrap up to the TV series, I'd never seen. Um, Did you watch it? And yeah, I watched it last weekend. Uh, and uh, trippy. Uh, the. Yeah, I'm uh, have mixed feelings because I, you know, it, it had been 20 years since I, you know, watched the series and then it's like, oh, this, w-, and I had built up in my mind, it's like, oh, how, what the end of Evangelion would be like. And it's simultaneously um, everything I expected it to be. And, you know, a lot of stuff I didn't want it to be. <laughs> kind of a letdown in, in some ways. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, 20 years of... It's like, oh, and the reason I didn't have it on DVD because, like, even by the time I was collecting those DVDs, the the price of Evangelion, end of Evangelion, the, that movie was so high. You're over $100 for just a single DVD. And I was like, I'm never buying this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm glad I finished it finally. Well, congratulations. Should we move on to bets? Be it. Okay. Last month, we bet on the Metacritic scores. This is something that we do every month on the podcast. Bet on the Metacritic scores, PlayStation 4 when applicable, of games releasing. And we bet on Crash Team Racing, correct? Yes. And Joe, you bet that that game would have a Metacritic score of 82. And you bet that it would have a Metacritic score of 88. And the PlayStation 4 version of Crash Team Racing has a Metacritic score of... 84. That's a win for Joe. We bet on the Metacritic of Super Mario Maker 2. Joe bet that it would have a 92. That's pretty high, Joe. Yeah, I just, uh, sacred cow. And, uh, I more, very much more reasonable-minded bet that it would have a Metacritic of 91. And the true Metacritic score of uh, Super Mario Maker 2 is 89. Ooh, so Joe, we're tied up. Tied one, up. 1-1. One. It all comes down to the final judgment. Oh, wait, that's a fitting. <laughs> it's uh the, the we're, final we're, game is Judgment uh from the creators of Yaxa. I bet that it would have a metacritic of 72. I was kind of thinking it would be a little bit slammed and I gave and I gave 78. And the correct metacritic score of PlayStation 4's Judgment is 80. So That's a win for Joe. Joe wins. Joe wins. Again. Joe wins. So w- what is your punishment? I don't look at it as, as much of a punishment as, as a challenge. A challenge, yeah. To be that's, overcome. That's, yeah. So I, uh, everybody knows this by now. Uh, Crash from Crash Bandicoot um, was found with a little bit of cocaine on his person. And... Uh, Activision came to us and said, hey, look, we need to recast Crash because of this. So they asked if Joe and I could find any suitable candidates or you know, and, and and submit them to the world and, and you know, to, get, to see who could replace Crash Bandicoot. So I must draw a replacement to Crash Bandicoot and post it to the carriage underscore way uh, Twitter account. And uh, we'll see what Activision thinks. Yeah. So you can also check that out. It should be going up shortly. It may take me a little bit of time to get that done with other things going on. Okay. uh, Now that that's uh, settled, next month's bets. We are betting on Dragon Quest. Build. Okay, wait. Hold up. The dates are weird on our piece of paper. We're betting on Sea of Solitude. Coming out July 8th. Uh, fifth, July fifth. Oh, fifth. Oh, that's a fifth. Oh, I can't read my own handwriting. Um, 
that's like a cool little indie game that's published by uh, EA. EA, oddly. And, uh, man, I, that's a hard one. I think it's going to get like a 83. I think it's going to get a 75. Yeah, probably. Uh, next up, we have... Dragon Quest Builders 2, coming out July 12th. Very excited for my, this. Well, yeah, my most anticipated game of the month. Okay. Jo- uh, you, yeah, you go. Okay. Uh, 84. <sighs> I think it's going to get an 88. Okay. I mean, I, I think it deserves more than both of our scores, but I mean, I'm saying... Will it get a higher Metacritic score than Super Mario Maker 2? Absolutely not. Uh, what's our next one? I can't read from here. Okay, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance three. Coming so this series, sweet. This series is coming back. It's a top down action role playing game thing. Yeah, that's gonna get a seventy one. Everybody. Okay, it's been some time. You don't remember, but those games scored crazy high for what they were. I'm gonna say an eighty. <sighs> I've already lost. Okay, next up we have uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses coming out for the Switch. Oh, that's... Oh, my turn. Uh, Okay, it's got Nintendo on the box, so (laughs) bump it up 10 points. Uh, I think that's going to get... I feel like a broken record a little with these mid-80 bets. I know. Well, that's just Uh, the majority of them are in the mid-80s. I'm going to say 85. Damn it. That's what I was going to say. And, you know, we should probably, like, write down what we're going to bet beforehand so, like, I can also duplicate it, you know, or double up on it because it kind of sucks to then, like, well, do I be a jerk and Price is Right it? (laughs) I feel like I get locked into then having to do, I got to make an extreme move. Okay. Okay. 89. Wow. high. Okay. Uh, And our final game. Just to make it an odd number, uh, Wolfenstein colon Young Blood is coming oh, out on the same day, July twenty sixth. Yeah, that will get. Man, it seemed like what what was that Bethesda game? I Rage Two boned me last time. Um, man, seventy nine, eighty seven. Okay. I just know the reviewers are gaga for the Wolfenstein franchise right now. I know. I I had to just make... I've lost so much. I feel so demoralized in our bets that... Uh, yeah, I just... You got to make the plays. Oh, we forgot to say what the stakes were. The stakes. Joe, do you want to say the stakes? Okay, since uh, Wolfenstein colon Young Blood is coming out next month, it takes... Uh, the main characters are a pair of twins, so the punishment and, and we don't know challenge. Those, we don't know if those are identical twins or fraternal twins. We didn't. Do, we have no research. We have, we did not do any research. We just this. know that it's twin sisters. Uh, whoever uh, loses must Photoshop their head twice onto both of their heads and then post it to Twitter. Yeah. So it's to be clear, it's not. Us photoshopping like Joe and my heads onto their heads. It's photoshopping our own head twice, twice onto theirs. Yeah, and and I think part of it is like on our Twitter we have to at Bethesda at Wolfenstein Youngblood <laughs> at all of the different Bethesda like people who could see that. <laughs> it's a good thing. Is just so. Bizarre. It's a good career move. Yeah. All right. how, how great would it be if that's the thing that made us famous? <laughs> it's like, oh, those are the guys that Photoshop themselves. They're, they're, they're the, one of themselves. Whoever loses next month will be the, become famous. That, yeah. That's really the, the, the thing right there. Yeah. By the way, have you seen the short Keanu meme? No. Like, so Keanu, the, the people have memed Keanu coming out for Cyberpunk 2077. With the fog? With the fog, but like they've like compress the image down so he has a big head and is like really short and stout oh i don't get it i don't know like why why someone created that but it's very funny to me uh anyway that's off topic we 
We thank you very much for listening to this podcast uh, for the month of June. We hope to... Uh, let's see. We hope to see you next month. It's July next month. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Took me a second. It's been a long day. Uh, so, in the meantime, we hope you subscribe to Carriage Way if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's beyond... Uh, your wildest, your wildest imaginations. <laughs> See you in the last Sunday of July. Why is everything loose? I feel like as I just get older, everything's just loose.